Hello guys, Ancient Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco Ho! and this is my cat. For this video I'm testing gaming performance on Windows versus Linux and I can tell you right away that the results that you'll see here will blow your mind. And before you start commenting things like I'm testing an optimized Linux version versus a, a standard Windows 11 one, no. I am literally a noob when it comes to Linux and the few things that I know, I know them because I learned them while making this video. And the results you see here are from testing Windows 11 24 half 2 versus the Novara 41 Linux. And all I had to do here was basically enter my Steam account, download Proton, which is a translation layer from Valve, something that we had before like Wine, and it was done. Every single game I tested was running out of the box, besides those games that have really picky anti-cheat software, because it just doesn't work because of the software, because the game would work. And I tested over 20 games and every single one of those worked. Even like Pal World, I was testing offline, but even if I went online, it would be the same, it just worked. There are some games with anti-cheat systems that won't work as well, but most of them will, or at least some of them will. And now you ask, what if I want to play the games that I have outside of Steam? And I asked myself the same question. And after a bit of searching, I found a launcher called Heroic Launcher that allows you to have all your games from GOG, Epic Store and Amazon Prime Store in the same software, which is pretty neat. And I'm pretty sure that there is something close to that for the EA and Ubisoft launchers. But for now, I'm going to launch it towards today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So again, I downloaded the Nobara 41 ISO, I installed the system, then it came with Steam installed already, all I had to do was install Proton, and after that I just installed the Heroic Launcher in order to play my games from GOG, the ones that you see in this video, like The Witcher and Cyberpunk 2077. And that's all. And with this I mean that anyone that can do a clean installation of Windows nowadays, which is pretty simple, can do a clean installation of Nobara 41 Linux as well, and make it ready to play. And this might sound odd for people that used Linux like 10 years ago, but Linux nowadays is actually easy to use. And in terms of gaming, we must appreciate what Valve did with Proton, that is based on the good old wine, because without them, things wouldn't have evolved the way they did, I suppose, even with SteamOS and so on. And now that you know how I made things work, let's see the results. This time we start with Witcher 3 and in this game Windows 11 with the AMD Adrenaline 25.1.1 drivers performs better when testing in Novigrad with the RX 6800 at all resolutions. But considering how poorly Linux gaming performed for some years, this is a major uplift when it comes to performance, especially due to Valve's Proton. As we go into Counter-Strike 2 with low settings, we see Windows 11 pulling ahead once again and this happened since I was using Proton GE as well, because even though Counter-Strike 2 was supposed to run natively, it just wouldn't start somehow. And it did start with Proton, but the performance was subpar as you can see. But it gets even worse when you raise the settings to very high with 4 times MSAA. Here, Windows 11 is 27% faster at 1080p, 43% faster at 1440p and 46% faster at 4K. And I looked online and it seems to be the case even when running natively with Counter-Strike 2 running worse on Linux versus Windows. Although as we move to Plague Tale Requiem things change and now Nobara Linux is faster than Windows even when using a translation layer to run the games, in this case Valve's Proton GE which shows us that either AMD is leaving too much performance in the table or Linux is just much more efficient in some cases, especially when it comes to CPU load. This being said, Nobara 41 is 17% faster at 1080p, 13% faster at 1440p and 8% faster at 4K. And even when moving to Cyberpunk 2077, that's using the Heroic Launcher and Proton GE, we do get better performance with Linux which is something that is still blowing my mind. The same game running with a conversion or translation layer is actually faster than when running natively on Windows. 
Some people stated that in some games the performance was higher on Linux because there was some elements of the X12 that couldn't be run or ran on Linux, but I didn't really notice any, anything different, to be honest, visually, so I guess that's not the case. And now we have Robocop Rock City, where we not only have higher averages, but also higher 1% lows. There are 12% higher at 1080p and 6% higher at 1440p. Again, the difference isn't really much, but seeing games running this well on Linux is astonishing, to be honest. And now we have Banisher's Ghost of New Eden, an Unreal Engine 5 title, and in this specific part, a CPU intensive one, Linux is beating the shit out of Windows, having higher 1% lows than Windows has on averages at both 1080p and 1440p, which is insane. And again, we found no differences whatsoever graphically wise, and this game was even retested since the difference was so big. That's what she said. Here, Nobara 41 is 23% faster at 1080p, 16% faster at 1440p, and 10% faster at 4K, which again, is a huge win for Linux here. Hellblade 2 is another Unreal Engine 5 title, but a way more GPU-driven one. Still, we do get a performance uplift when using Linux versus Windows. And again, this should never be the case, as Linux is using Proton to translate the code in order to run the game, and that takes power, so again, <laughs> I guess it is what it is. And Black Myth Wukong, another Unreal Engine 5 title, is showing exactly the same, with Nobara 41 pulling slightly ahead of Windows 11. Not by much, like in other scenarios or other titles, but still a win, something that nobody would have thought possible some years ago. And now we have Homeworld 3, an excellent title to test CPUs. At 1080p we're more CPU driven again, so Linux takes the upper hand, although as we move to 1440p and 4K and things get more GPU driven, Windows starts pulling its own weight, finally, and starts performing better than Linux, the way that it should always be. It happened the same way with Counter-Strike 2 that ran much worse on Linux when using very high settings, so I guess that we might be into something here. Resident Evil 4 is another great title, and we're not testing with ray tracing since we can't enable it on this game when using Proton GE. Still, Linux is pretty much on par with Windows 11 here, being actually slightly faster overall, but nothing really relevant. But this means that you can play Resident Evil 4 on Linux with virtually the same performance that you do on Windows, and that's crazy. And I also tested some more recent games like Stalker 2 to see how they would perform. And again, Linux is taking the lead delivering virtually the same results as Windows 11, but with better 1% lows at 1080p. I do have to state though that I felt like this game had more latency when running on Linux. This was the only one where I felt it though, and it might even be placebo effect since I didn't measure it. But Stalker 2 just felt slower to respond on Linux, at least to me, maybe due to Proton. God of War Ragnarok shows more of the same here, with Nobara 41 being again on top of the hill, being slightly faster than Windows 11 at all resolutions. And by the time you reach this game, you might already have prepared for the rest of the video, but as for me, I still don't understand how this can happen. I guess that maybe AMD drivers are just much better on Linux. Guess I do have to test AMD and Nvidia cards for the next video. As for Silent Hill 2, it is a shit show when it comes to traversal stutters, being it on Windows or Linux. Linux does show slightly higher 1% lows across the board, though, delivering 31% better 1% lows at 1080p. But still crappy. And now we have another surprise with Space Marine 2 being considerably faster on Linux as well. This time we have Nobara 41 being 15% faster at 1080p, 10% faster at 1440p, and 6% faster at 4K. And again, either these AMD Linux drivers do a much better job than the Windows ones, or something is very wrong. And this makes me think that maybe, maybe AMD could be extracting much more performance out of their cards with better drivers for Windows, I guess. But it is what it is. And we'll now have some fun with the Rift Breaker CPU benchmark where the results are more or less in line with what we saw before in the previous benchmarks, but as soon as we move to the GPU benchmark, things change, and Windows 11 now takes the lead, being 6% faster at 1080p, 9% faster at 1440p, and 11% faster at 4K, 
showing us once again that in the more GPU-driven scenarios, Windows is still superior. But when it comes to the more CPU-driven ones, Linux usually takes the lead even with a translation layer on top of it, which is actually interesting. And this time I also tested Pellworld, and again we have more of the same, with Nobara 41 performing slightly better at 1080p and 1440p and being slightly slower at 4K. We should state though that the 1% lows were considerably lower on the Linux at higher resolutions, which again proves the point that with more GPU load usually Linux tends to perform slightly worse. Getting closer to the end we have the Thaumaturge, a game that I actually enjoyed a lot. And again, we have the same tendency as in some other games, with Linux performing better at 1080p, delivering higher averages and especially higher 1% lows, but as soon as we go to 1440p and 4K, those same 1% lows get considerably lower than when running Windows 11. Which is a bummer, to be honest, but not a deal breaker at all if you ask me, at least if you're looking into Linux for gaming, not a deal breaker at all. Now, after looking at all the results being basically better on Linux, you might be asking yourself, how is it possible for Windows to be better if games were performing better on Linux all the time? Well, that happens due to the shitty Counter-Strike 2 results that we got on Linux. Take those away and you have Nobara 41 being 4% faster at 1080p and 3% faster at 1440p which again is something that is very hard to explain as those games were running natively on Windows and most of them still run worse than on Linux. And to someone that has been testing Linux a bit here and there over the years, these results just blew my mind. But well, let's go to the final thoughts. And well guys, as you saw, very, very interesting results and Again, I told you in the beginning of the, of the video that most of the results, or at least some of the results, would blow your mind, and at least to mine, to my mind, they did it. I, I was, I was never, never expecting Linux gaming to perform better than Windows, apart from native implementations like maybe Counter Strike 2 running natively, Dota 2, and some other games that can run natively on Linux. Now, working better than Windows while running a Proton GE layer. So basically translating the code in order to run it on Linux and still having better performance than Windows, that's just crazy. And I don't really know if that comes to AMD drivers, if the, if the drivers are just better on Linux um, and, and maybe the, the Windows drivers are handicapping the performance of the AMD cards on Windows, I don't really know. What I know is that I tested on both systems with the same card and Linux is just better in most of them, especially in games like Space Marine 2, uh, Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden, the difference is just big. And funny enough, games that have nati native implementation on Linux, like Counter-Strike 2, when I run them with Proton GE, they actually run much worse than on Windows. But as soon as we go to other games, even God of War, Ragnarok, Stalker 2, they just run generally better even with Proton, they just run generally better on Linux, and that, that is just insane. I know it's 2025, but what they did here now with Linux is just insane. You can just go install Linux, install Proton, make your Steam account, install the Heroic Launcher, for example, and just enjoy your games. Just play them. All you have to do is basically just select Proton, go to play, and the game will launch and will play. Games like Resident Evil 4 will have the same exact performance on Windows, and, and Linux, so you won't be losing performance anymore. Or in the games that, will, that you will be losing performance, well, uh, I mean, it's Proton, it's a translation layer to Vulkan, you can't do much, but generally the performance is basically the same, at least on AMD cards. Also guys, I just forgot of another very, very good point of having Novara Linux versus Windows, is the, basically the preloading of the shaders. So on Linux you have at least on the Steam games, of course, you have way, way less stutters, and that happens because since you're running Vulkan, the shaders are preloaded when using Vulkan. And that's a thing that I believe that um that Steam should do or should allow you to do still on the um, on the Windows side as well, because it just works much better. For example, in games like the Thaumaturge, where I had stutters every step that I took in a new direction, 
when running Novara Linux, it just works well because the Vulkan shaders are just preloaded or preloaded, sorry, Portuguese was taking over before the game goes in. And the same happens for all the other games. So generally, even in PAL world, for example, generally the games are way smoother at the first try because the shaders are preloaded. Thing that Steam should allow for the X11 and the X12 on Windows as well. I would love it. So this is another big side for Linux. Now, if you want me to do another one of these videos, because I don't, I, I didn't really know if people would like this video or not. I hope they did. So if you want another one now with a newer card, for example, the 7900 XTX, and maybe with something like a 4080 Super testing Windows versus Linux as well, just leave the comment in the comment section telling me that you want 7900 XTX, for example, versus RTX 4080 Super Windows versus Linux as well, because I will make this video if this video has at least, let's say, 50,000, 1,000 views. I would aim for at least 50,000 views. If the video reaches the 50,000 views, I will do another one for the XTX, for the, the newer AMD versus NVIDIA cards, also on Windows and Linux. That's basically it. So again, with these results, you now know that Linux gaming in 2025 is not perfect, but near perfect. And I'm saying not perfect because there are some drawbacks of playing or gaming in Windows full time. First of all, some anti-cheat systems won't work with Linux. So if you want to play games like Call of Duty and so on, yeah, that might not work because again, not because of the game itself, because of the anti-cheat software. That's the reason. Now, uh, there are some other things like, for example, some benchmarks don't work there. But if we're talking about benchmarks, there are also positive points like the fact that um, in terms of, of applications like Blender and so on, you have Rockham for the AMD cards, of course, you have Rockham natively on Linux, meaning that you don't really need to do all the steps with a Linux subsystem on Windows and so on, you just run and Rockham runs natively on Windows, meaning that in terms of productivity, Linux will be better for the AMD cards. So there's that. But in terms of gaming, almost every single thing works and it works pretty well. Honestly, it works pretty well. And I'm really eager to see what SteamOS brings to the table because it seems that Valve is uh, is thinking of releasing SteamOS for computers as well, for mainstream computers, and that would be dope because we would have a system aimed for gaming, specifically for gaming made by Valve. Um, and it would just be awesome, really. It would just be awesome to have it, see it in terms of performance, gaming, compatibility, and so on. But overall, yeah, productivity for the MD cards, it is better on Linux. There are several applications that don't work for Linux, sadly, but in terms of gaming and so on, everything basically works now with the translation layer. It's so, so, so easy. It's just so easy to do that. It's really mind blowing what Linux was 10 years ago and what it is now. It's just much better. And you can definitely use it as a daily driver for 99% of, of applications that you have. It's just, it's just the way it is. Very, very good, I must say. If you're playing competitively online and so on, you still have to rely on Windows, of course. But besides that, you can just use Linux as a daily driver without any kind of issues because again, it just works. And well, that's all for today's video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about today's video if you really enjoyed it. And again, if you want another one with, with a more recent AMD card and an NVIDIA card as well, just let me know in the comment section because I really want to know. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Cheers.